Welcome to a new as health. Foods. Today we're going to talk about herbs and healing in West Africa. It's to thousands of years. And um, before the introduction of Western medicine into our systems here, there was a healer in every family, or at least in every village, that dealt with our health needs. And uh, if to get back to the same trend, Sankofa going back to our history and practice African traditional health care as a way of life we will not only be saving a lot of money but will be saving a lot of lives we will even be saving our environment as well because by knowing the use of very common plants people are not going to be so negligent as always using harsh chemicals to spray their compounds and their surroundings and call it we decide. It is earth destruction and it's not we decide because after you spray the weeds and they are dead, where does the chemical go to? The chemical still sinks into the soil and then you plant your foods in it and consume that chemical back. Or in other words, you will inhale the very chemicals that have hit the sun, that have hit the soil, and when the sun's rays hit it, it evaporates into the air and you breathe it as you are walking along. We need to be very conscious of our environment because as we describe health, health is more of having the right knowledge and health is not about popping of pills and unnecessary surgeries. To be honest to ourselves, if we are talking about health in West Africa, you cannot do away with the nutritional part of it. Our people are so much scientifically in tune from the beginning of man's history on earth that health in West Africa starts with you as a fetus in the stomach of your mother. When a woman is pregnant, the herbalist or the health care, the native health care givers in our environment or our society immediately know what type of food or herbs that must be given to the pregnant woman. So even in your mother's belly, you are being introduced to the right way of health. So I call the healing in Ghana or West Africa the health that begins from the day you are born until the day you exit this earth. There are so many and the 
and the people who live in Accra, there is an area in Accra called Kachu. That area has been named after a very important plant. Its biological name is Zytophyllium. And it's used in treating so many things, even including sickle cell, hypertension, and others. Our people is not only the guns. Our people, especially in Ghana, and I've also listened to some names in Liberia and Nigeria, name certain heads that will never forget the usage. For example, the gun also called flachu. Literally explained meaning the saw tree and it's very good for the treatment of ulcer. Now, are these the people who were calling illiterates and fetish? Their science was so divinely intuitive that it has to it. They will always tell you to eat certain foods to have a certain effect. And this is informal. For example, even play among peers, they will tell you that if your eyesight is not good enough, if you pass a ball wrongly in football, or if you are playing drafts and you can't see and they trap you, they will tell you that don't you eat palm oil. Our ancestors never went to any white man's university to teach them that palm oil contains vitamin A and it was good for their eyes. Honestly speaking, it's only our people and probably maybe the Indians, when I read a little bit about Ayurveda, who treat the eye from inside out. With Western medicine, all that it can do is to either give you spectacles, and spectacles, I call them eye crutches, because if you have broken your leg and you have something to help you walk, it's not solving the problem. It's just a temporary aid. Meanwhile, our ancestors knew long time ago medicines that you can take and it will correct the optic nerves from inside out. In fact, when we were kids, there was this popular medicine that is always sold around, especially in the trains. And they call it abenquine, literally meaning palm soup. Okay. And we know the level of vitamin A in palm nuts. Okay. This was not learned from any white man's university or school. Our ancestors knew it intuitively. You see, so if we want to develop as a people and we want to discard or demonize or rubbish everything that is ours especially everything that is native knowledge we are really hurting ourselves and we are destroying the knowledge base that will be needed by generations yet unborn they have a lot of knowledge that we have to turn back in the Sankofa spirit to go and bring it back into the fall and probably add a little bit of our commodity school into it. Make it more convenient and acceptable on the world market because Everybody is trying to gain control in the world. Look at the onset of non-communicable and lifestyle diseases that has plagued our country 
in our region in West Africa these days. A typical example is diabetes. Unfortunately, diabetes in the mainstream medical system is treated by only lowering the blood sugar levels. And so when you go and your blood sugar level is down, oh, you are doing well. But honestly speaking, it is not a matter of glucose. I know God does not contradict himself. Glucose is the substance that acts as a vehicle to transmit almost all the nutrients to all parts of the body. So the same glucose cannot go and impair the pancreas. And fortunately enough, in my travels, meeting with a lot of natural healers, when I went to the United States, and with correspondents from other countries, like India and Australia, we've come to find out that the pancreas is not by glucose. It is after the pancreas have been destroyed that it can no longer work as it's supposed to work. And then it cannot regulate the insulin that regulates the glucose. And the pancreas is impaired by what? By hydrogenated oils and partially hydrogenated oils and trans fatty acids like the fats that are used in all our sweet sweet bakeries and pastries and all those things they impair the pancreas and destroy it and if we could just turn our heads back into Sankofa history we will get to know that the time when we were using only our fats and oils, our native, natural, unhydrogenated oils like shea butter, coconut oil, palm kernel oil, and palm oil, red palm oil I mean, we were never having problems like diabetes and all those things you see so when i sometimes hear people talking about oh just try to eat your uh oils moderately be careful about your not created equal there is a difference, difference between oil which you can use in cooking and olive oil which you can only use in dressing your salad. Olive oil can be tooted and called all other names. It has no challenge at all to play with something like coconut oil. If you cook with olive oil, it will become toxic. If you cook with coconut oil, it still retains its values and nutrients. But the Western world did everything it could to tell us those days how powerful, and even now, how powerful is our media. They used the media to demonize and completely destroy the reputation of coconut oil. And it was put in all the American books. Coconut oil is saturated oil, so it's not good. Well, it is a naturally saturated oil. And what I know is that you cannot compare naturally saturated oil to artificial saturation. Okay, so the oil that we are told are unsaturated are not natural oils for consumption. Honestly, in our native setting, in our homes and villages, nobody cooks
you can only get natural oils when they are occurring to you naturally. For example, coconut. When coconut becomes so dry that it's a copra, even with your hands pressing on it, you see oil all over. And for the sake of commercialization, oils were made out of things that were not naturally exuding oils. And they were forced out. Anything that is done by force brings out a force to fight back. And that is negative to us. It's a law in physics and science and it's a law also in spirituality. Action and reaction are opposite and equal. You can't slap somebody and decide that the person should be laughing at you. That's the reason why even the Pope rides in a bulletproof car. The first law of creation is the law of preservation. And even for human babies to be formed in a woman's womb, there is a competition by millions or sperms in the spastosia fighting to be fertilized. So I don't see the reason why we just have to sit down in Ghana or West Africa and swallow everything hook, line, and sinker. We were lied to that coconut oil was not good. Now the same coconut oil is being used for diabetics, for so many illnesses that were claimed to be chronic or incurable. And you see, that word incurable is even an insult to the rest of the healers of the world. Because God in his wisdom made human beings to be gregarious. Okay, we need one another because like our ancestors say, knowledge or wisdom is like the baobab tree. One person's arms cannot encompass it. So I don't see why if a group of people, I don't care whether they call themselves an institute or whatever, decide that because they cannot find an answer to something, then universally nobody else can find an answer to it. And we have been accepting it. I see it as an insult because as I stand here, there are so many things I've done for people and I'm happy about it and I'm doing it. But there are so many things I don't know that probably even my students I taught so many years in the primary school will be able to teach me about it. You see, we must be humble enough and we must also be proud Africans enough to know that we also have a heritage. We are not a, a, a plain sheet with nothing on it that we have to absorb everything from outside. We have a lot to give to the outside world if it comes to health especially. Um, this sesamasa leaves the group the Krobos call it Nyabachu, literally meaning the plant that answers all things, or so a lot of things. You see, like I said from the beginning, our people just don't name plants anyhow. They name them 
according to their usage. So you can never forget about them. Uh, and my worry for a very long time is that uh, why do we accept people to doubt our progress in health? Because all these plants were here and they were being used correctly over the years. In fact, something that annoys me more is when somebody tells me that the herbalist at that corner there has not got his things scientifically proven. Proven by who? And in what way? Science is about observation, experimentation, and verification. Now, the tests they normally make in Europe and the other so-called developed countries, they start with animals. Then, they have what they call human trials. Then the human trials, they do it for several weeks or months. And then they come to a conclusion that it's now safe. In fact, I beg to differ. Our people have a safer way because from what I learned from our ancestors, a lot of the herbs that we are knowing of today, especially for treating very serious illnesses or poisons and others, were learned from sometimes hunters. They go into the bush and probably like a story says, they saw probably two snakes fighting. One bit the other one, it was almost dying, and the other one went and took a leaf and put it on the other one, and it got up. So the hunter in this hiding place went gradually and looked at the leaves and saw that it was an antidote. A lot of them can be taken as just myths. But honestly, some of these stories have a scientific base. So we should not just discard what we have. Moringa has been with us for several ages. And it was being fed to animals in some part of the country to make them very fertile. That alone tells you that our ancestors knew how very important it was. Then there is also a dish in the north uh, whereby they use moringa, they, they pound moringa into balls and then they add it to uh, the this that will enjoy and it was not only nutritious but very tasty very nice they knew how to add the amount of salt you know our people don't cook with skills and those things but the accuracy by which they will be able to preserve a certain taste in the food over so many years and when you tell me that I don't take herbal medicine because they don't have measurement. Excuse me, what do you call measurement? You see, do we have to explain everything in the Westerners language or culture for it to make sense? It's a big no. You see this uh, Cassia Occidentalis our people call it Mofra Mofra board here. And the young herbalists in the village can easily tell you that you see these seeds, if you roast them and you grind them, it's very good. You can use them to uh, put your malaria at bay. You can even use them to cure typhoid and things. And then the roots, they will just tell you, wash it 
and then uh, chew it for severe stomach ache. You see, some of these things, they are not trial and error now. They have been tried and tested for several years. And they were not on albino rats or cockroaches. They were on human beings. You see, and they have worked. So if we're talking about a knowledge that is empirical, then our knowledge is very empirical. Because even with me, who have not done so many years, I can count at least 41 years of listening to people in the herbal industry up to now. And practicing some of those things and seeing them work because they have been practiced and authenticated already. You see, in the African healing system, like I always tell people, to know or to test the authentic herbalist, it's not the, the size of the certificate he has uh, pasted on his wall in his office. It is by the results of his work. Because uh, I tell you, it's these days that people have really neglected their source. Otherwise, you get to a town or even a, a small village and you have a problem. Whether it's snake bite or a child who is sick, they will immediately point at somebody to you. Somebody that the whole village knows have proven him or herself practically. And you see a lot of this uh, wisdom that some of them even came in, 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 in the form of uh, taboos that we so much detest are now being proven to make a lot of sense. Uh, there are tribes in Ghana, the Krobos in the south, and some tribes in the north who do not take snails. And so I made a conscious effort to find out that because our medical doctors always tell our people that, especially when the women are pregnant, they should eat more snails so that they will get calcium. So I was asking myself, where does the snake get its calcium from? <laughs> and where are people so naive to just tell people, because they were fetish, to just tell people, stop eating this type of food? They might have observed something, you see. And I think that self-defeatist and self-hate attitude we must discard it as quickly as possible if we want to get forward. And we, we must get out of that habit of being total beggars. Because sooner or later, a beggar becomes a nuisance. And when you become a nuisance, they will tell you that you should come and take uh, your cocoa from their house in the morning in a, in a chamber pot. They will not only let you, your children line up in front of their house to come and take their cuckoo so that they will see you are a beggar. They will tell you, bring a chamber pot. Okay, so they insult you to the core. And even if after that you are still adamant, you don't change. Very soon, they will start even poisoning the leftovers they are giving to you in the chamber pot. So if we really want to not just survive and exist, but we must be able to live like normal and respectable human beings and people who deserve to also occupy this planet Earth as respectable human beings, then we must tell our own story. And you cannot tell a story you don't know. We must be ready
to learn in order to survive, to live, and then to enjoy. Because honestly speaking, there are so many lies in Western medical science. When I was writing this, my book, I made a lot of research about so-called menopause for our women, where they start drumming it by the, on the radio, on the television. By the time the person is 35, going to 40, they start building up the negative impulse in your mind. When I went to do a research in some villages, especially in the Afram Plains, going to my microbe or Semenshia, where the women were so busy about their, and they don't even have television to watch or listen to radio, and they were eating their organic food and living like how the Creator wanted us to live. They were not having this sense of menopause. Even at 61, some of them were very active. Come to our cities. See young people at 40 years telling you, oh, it looks like what is happening to me is menopause. Who has paused you? And we don't even relate our emotions to our health. But our ancestors knew this. That they were even able to deal with traumatic pain from accidents so that out of fear you will not have a recurrence because like our place if you have an accident there is a ritual performed for you which will let you know that you are not going to fall into that same accident again you see so these ideas of a uh, uh, a trauma clinic here, trauma hospital here, and those things, I think they are new. They aren't. Our people knew these things long time ago, and they practiced it very meticulously. In fact, we preserved the environment. They have some of the forests as their natural pharmacies, so they will tell you, don't go there. And people will come with this uh, psychotic religious beliefs and tell you that it's because they have been killing people there. It is fetish. No, no, no. They are the natural pharmacies. And sometimes there may be an emergency in the night and the herbalist may have to enter into that place. So if the terrain is destroyed, how will he find a plan? Because he knows that when I enter this forest, after about four, five, six steps, I have Nyanya on my left, I have this on my right. So they were preserving it to save lives. I'm surprised that we use all kinds of words to rubbish everything that is ours. And so even our leaders of society who have been able to gather this knowledge to be able to transfer it to the next generations for our upkeep, and remember, if you are able to know the use of health, you will not destroy or desecrate the environment. Because you know the use of the plants. And in fact, it's even economically wise to know health. Let me give you a typical example. The dawadawa tree, everything on it is useful. Even the pod can be used as a dye. That's what we use in dyeing the smalls. Everything on it is useful. The Dawadawa seed is fermented to give us the pungent Dawadawa that we use in cooking our food. So many of the trees, because they don't know their economic value, because of the absence of herbal knowledge, they just destroy them. People cut down our trees and burn them into charcoal. Okay. People do not know the use of other medicinal plants. So they just weed them away. But all of them have special benefits. 
And for us to wrap up, I will quote an old man who taught me helps in Bronga Hafu. He said in the Chi language, your tear draw so, and the tear draw. Literally meaning that when you are going to look for a plant, you may be stepping on other plants to go and look for the one you are looking. But somebody coming behind you who knows the value of those plants is probably searching for the one you are stepping on. That's how vast the knowledge about herbs are. And so we must always remember that from all parts of our country and West Africa, the tier a so and the tier drew. You are welcome back to the next edition. knowledge of herbs a lot of people will not be going to drugstores to be looking for blood tonic to buy most of us cook our food too drab and too dry and I learned from our ancestors but I think now before the West is even knowing it. But a lot of Ghanaians are still making the mistake. We take our carbohydrate foods, put them into a lot of water, boil it, and say we are eating food. When I was growing up, I saw that most of our roots and tubers in the villages were steamed, not boiled. And after learning about nutritional healing, I've seen that when you steam foods, they retain their nutritional values better. So please, there is a lot we can learn from our traditional way of healing and feeding ourselves. The palm tree, apart from the palm nuts that give us vitamin A, even the leaves, give us solid vitamin A because I, as a child, when we went to the farm, there is this palm nuts that are very tiny. And we'll plug it, put it in the fire, and chew it with these leaves. And they tasted so nice. our health may health stream givers will not advise our pregnant or nursing mothers to eat a lot of things that have vitamin A so that it will pass on through the breast milk to the child. Instead of going we having palm nuts in West Africa and we are still importing vitamin A to be given to, to drop on our children's Songs. We need to learn our ancient wisdom because there are a lot of things that we don't even know. This Sodom apple leaves. Sodom apple leaves. You can just put it in your socks. 
and it absorbs a lot of uh, negative things from your body, including the this is the sodom apple. And I don't think it was any Westerner who came and showed our people this. Because this is the very shrub that our Fulanese in West Africa use in solidifying milk into the curd that is popularly called wagashi. So a lot of people even call this thing wagashi leaf. It is a natural coagulant that is used to coagulate the milk. Now, I was talking about how our people name plants. This lantana is called in Chi Anansi Dokno. You know, there is this connotation about Anansi that anything that is sensible, brainy, has something to do with Kekua Anansi. And it has been found out that the lantana has some nutrients that helps to nourish the brain for memory. You can use it as a tea. And you can use it in cold extracts. Any question? Yes, Doc, if you could, if you could hear me. I saw you bring um, plantain leaves, several, but you did not demonstrate what it could possibly do. Thank you. Yes, the fresh plantain leaves. Yes. They are very good. You know, Plantain, all the parts of plantain, I have said it over and over again that if we could know the use of plantain, it can give Ghana more money than cocoa. And in the first place, cocoa, the price is set up by the consumer, the person who buys it from us. But the things plantain can do, look, you see this fresh plantain leaves. You can chew it. Wow. Young females who have problem with their menstruation, if they have either plantain or banana in their house, they can just pick about three centimeters of the new one, we call it the spear, and chew every morning. Because the blood is not made only of iron. Iron, potassium, magnesium, and all of them are contained in the plantain. And it gives energy. In fact, even people with hypertension, a lot of the medicines that you are given in allopathics in the allopathic system are potassium based to bring down the pressure. You chew this and the body, you see, God has designed the body to be able to do a lot of things that can help it regenerate or rejuvenate itself. But we have rather cause it not to do that by doing the wrong things. If you do the right things for the body, the body will be able to do fantastic work. And I still do not believe there is anything called an incurable disease. My assertion will be an incurable habit of self-defeatism because if 
you are able to tell yourself you cannot do it. You are right, you can't do it. And if you tell yourself you can do it, you are also right, you can do it. A lot of the foundations our ancestors have given us in the total health and herbal industry, if we are to use it well, we will be able to save a lot of money and a lot of lives. With my next presentation here, I will be able to show on the screen some before and after of a leg. And I started treating that leg long time ago because I was taught those medicines by my uncle. Long time ago, even before my studies of, I said, 41 years ago. That was long time ago. For 41 years, is just about 1982. I'm talking about things that I was doing in the 70s. That people still think it is impossible, or they will tell you it cannot be done. A typical example is this uh, cancerous source that come when women have problem with their breast, or when people have diabetic sore and they go and cut it and they say it cannot be done. If you cannot do it, say you cannot do it, don't say it cannot be done. All right, Doc. Thank you very much. I've seen a particular herb on your left side. It has this uh, fibrous root something. If you can, good. Can you please be kind to tell us a little bit about it? This cider akuta, it is called in Chi Obranie Tuata. You see how our people named the herbs. It was so strong that even in pulling it, if you don't take time, you will force. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's used uh, in male virility. I think because of the energy you use in pulling it, our people also uh, was able to research and find out that, oh, if this thing is chewed or added to some concussions, it improves male virility, virility, which is very true. Okay. okay. So, I think it's enough for today. Um, we will try as much as possible to know that uh, natural medicine is the only way to go. It helps us to save our environment. It helps us to save people's lives. Sometimes when I hear our doctors on the other side saying that, oh, rush him to the nearest hospital. How near is the nearest hospital? <laughs> Probably if there was somebody with some knowledge close by, that person could have given a first aid to save the person's life. So I'm not against ambulances and rush him to the nearest hospital. But what I'm asking is that, how near is the nearest hospital? Even in Accra, where you have so many hospitals, imagine there is traffic. How are you going to lift the person off and drop him onto the doctor's feet? So having this knowledge is so, so, so important. You don't need to be a practitioner to be able to have the right natural or herbal knowledge because one day it can save your own life or somebody else's life. There is a very important herb that we'll discuss on our next this thing from the Upper West that even when you have a snake bite, you can just place it there and chew part of it and immediately it's gone. So you are welcome to the next episode.